Hello class! In this video, we'll create a high polygon hammer model from scratch, and we'll bake the textures maps, so we can use the low polygon model in game engine and preserve the details from the high polygon model. We will start with a polygon cube. Select all edges and apply bevel. Go to insert edge loop tool, tool settings. Add one edge loop in the center of the cube. Add three edge loops on each side. And delete the one near the center. Select the two belts. And apply extrude. Change the thickness and offset values. Create a cylinder. Adjust its dimensions and subdivisions. Select the top and bottom faces, and apply Extrude. Hit the G key to repeat Extrude. Delete the top face and extrude the bottom face. Create another cylinder, and we'll make buckles on the belt.
Now, we'll start working on the UVs. Remember to save your project. The side faces are facing the x-axis, so we can use planar mapping and project UVs from the x-axis. Move the UVs to the side and flip the inverted UVs. For the rest faces, we'll use cylindrical projection. Rotate the projection cylinder to the correct direction and change the projection sweep to cover all faces. Select the edges on the bottom. In the UV editor, hold shift key and right click and cut the UVs. Select the existing UV border and sew the edges. Double-click to select the edge loops on the belts. And cut the UVs. Freeze transformation and delete history. Select all UV shells, hold shift key and right-click, and unfold the UVs. Go to Modify Layout to place all pieces together in the texture area. Now, we'll move on to the handle. Select the faces on the bottom and apply planar mapping from the Y-axis. Select the other faces and apply cylindrical mapping. Adjust the scale to match the proportion of the faces on the model. Delete the bottom faces on the buckle. Apply planar mapping in project from the y-axis. Select everything and apply the layout to put them together. Manually rearrange the UVs. It's recommended to have some gaps between each UV shells to prevent the texture spill across different shells. Duplicate the buckle and move it along the Z-axis. Duplicate it again and invert the Z-value. Duplicate all three buckles and group them. The pivot point will be at the center of the world. You can now rotate the group, and the duplicated buckles will be placed on the other side of the belt.
Select all buckles. Bring the UVs into the texture space. Double click on the UV shell and separate the shells. Go to object mode, select all buckles and combine all meshes into one mesh. Freeze transformation and delete history. Duplicate the buckle mesh and group it. Invert the scale X value to flip it to the other side. Freeze transformation and delete history so its UV will be correctly displayed. Ungroup the mesh and flip its UV. Make sure the UVs do not overlap with the other meshes. We can now combine all buckles into one mesh. Save the progress to the current file. Then, save it into a new file, and we will only use it for sculpting. Go to the smooth settings, and set the values as shown on the screen. It will add subdivisions without smooth the shape and the original UV. That way, when we bake the sculpted high polygon meshes onto the base mesh, there will be no distortion on the textures. The edge loop on the side of the belt might be distorted. We can simply delete it and will manually add an edge loop later. Go to the Insert Edge Loop tool, and we will evenly divide the edges to increase the subdivision level. Double check and make sure you've added edge loops on all edges.
We'll do the same thing on the handle. Once finished adding edge loops, freeze transformation and delete history and remember to save progress to the current file. Now, we'll send our model to Mudbox and we'll start sculpting. If it says Mesh has problems, just click on Keep All. Sometimes it's due to a few faces that are not quads and we can ignore it for now. You can hit the W key to turn wireframes on and off. Select the hammer mesh and hit the shift and D key to increase the subdivision level. Lock the other two meshes. Go to the Layers panel, create a Sculpt layer, and select the Sculpt tool. Here are the shortcuts to adjust the brush size and brush strength. You can also use the sliders on the right panel to adjust the size and strength. Hit the W key to turn off wireframes and select the material so the mesh is not highlighted in yellow color. You are highly recommended to use a drawing tablet for sculpting. By holding the shift key, you can smooth the mesh. We can use the knife tool to sculpt some scratches on the hammer. Use the flatten tool to flatten the sharp corners. You can combine it with the knife tool to polish the edges.
Now we finished sculpting the hammer head. Let's move on to the handle. Create a sculpt layer. Use the smooth tool to smooth the sharp corners. That way, when we bake the texture map onto the base mesh, it will render smooth corners. Then, hit the Shift and D key to increase subdivision level. Create a new sculpt layer. Hit the W key to hide wireframes, and use the knife tool to sculpt some cracks on the wood. Then, flatten the sharp corners. Use the knife tool to sculpt some scar on the metal. Increase subdivision levels on the buckles. Create a new sculpt layer. Select Sculpt Tool, go to the Stencil panel, and add a stencil.
The shortcut to move the stencil image and to turn it on and off is showing here. The stencil image will act as a mask when sculpting on it. Follow the same procedure and sculpt all buckles with the stencil image. Now, we finished sculpting the high polygon hammer. In the next step, we will move on to texture painting.